Supercomputing is a bit unique from other shows in that when you order internet, they actually bring fiber gigabit ethernet to your booth. This means that we are responsible for bringing our own network switch and laying our own ethernet cables under the carpet for the internet we need throughout the booth. However, this year my shipment to SC22 had to go straight to show site and my pallets wouldn't be arriving until the day after I arrived. This meant I had to put eight 50 foot ethernet cords in my checked luggage and bring them to the show with me so that I'd have them readily available when we got started. When laying down flooring, you want to make sure all of your electrical and in this case ethernet cables are in exactly the right spot according to the technical plan. If they're not, they might not be long enough to reach whatever you need to power or they won't be in the right spot to be hidden by the booth structure. We started by setting up the structure of the bar that can seat six for impromptu meetings and is also where we serve refreshments during the show. We also have power outlets, USB outlets, and ethernet ports at the bar so that people can use their laptops during meetings. The rigging labor came right on time to hang up our hanging sign. It takes some time to make sure it's in exactly the right spot over the booth and the right height from the floor. We have a height limit to be sure we're within the show's rules and we can't have it too low or it will hit the lights on top of the booth. One of the items we reuse is these IKEA lights on the bar. They are inexpensive, but since they are made from plastic and hair ties, they are great to reuse over and over again. They just add a little special design element to the bar. With our partner TMG Core, the plan was to get the tank onto the carpet and fill it on day number one, but the forklift labor did not come on time as they were running really behind, so TMG Core had to come back the next day to fill the tank. Along with TMG Core, we showcased the world's first two-phase liquid immersion cooled version of the OSS Rigel Edge supercomputer. If you want to read more about this solution, I have linked the press release about it below. Once we started building the main structure, we thought the sign was in the wrong spot, but it turns out the walls had shifted and we didn't notice. So luckily we fixed it before we continued to build and we didn't need the rigging team to come back and move the sign. In just a few seconds, you'll see I'm off to the right side. What I'm doing is moving the handles from the inside of a cabinet to the outside. And unfortunately, it's just one too many times moving the handles because they were stripped. That prompted Home Depot trip number one. Normally for this part of the build, I request three carpenters because the canopy takes a few people to safely install. Unfortunately, I was only sent two carpenters because almost half of the Dallas carpenter labor force called out sick with COVID. Thankfully, we got a little extra help just for the canopy part. At this point, I'm texting my shipping carrier because one of the pallets I shipped from the office was damaged in transit. Right here, I am noticing there might be something wrong with one of the TVs that was on the damaged pallet. Two of the TV boxes were completely mangled. I tested one TV and it seemed okay at first, but then the image started flickering. It turned out though that it was just a bad HDMI wire, not the TV itself. Both TVs from the damaged pallet were amazingly fine. One of my TVs on a different pallet that wasn't damaged, however, wasn't working properly, so that prompted a trip to Best Buy. We then moved on to installing the cabinets and counters where we showcase all of the OSS product. During this time, I plugged in our network switch and we had no link lights, so I knew the fiber was broken somewhere. We waited for Signet to come to the booth and verify the break wasn't right where we needed to put up the last bit of structure to close off our closet. They verified the break was 200 feet away from our spool, so we were able to install our shelves and move on to graphics. We had to remove some graphics that were already on the booth when it came from the last show. During this time, I also noticed that one of the plastic shelves we use inside our closet was broken, so that prompted Home Depot trip number two. Finally, the structure is done and ready for us to put out our product, load up our demos, and open the show. Here is the completed OSS booth just before the opening gala. Our next video will be a booth tour where we walk you through all of the products that we showcased at SC22, so be sure to keep an eye out for that video as well. Thanks for watching our SC22 booth setup time lapse video.